Now, today, reaction has been coming in to the confirmation that the region's largest police force is facing the most radical shake-up in its history. Indeed, the Chief Constable of West Midlands Police, Chris Sims, says it'll mean a leaner, more efficient operation. Now, under the proposals, private companies could be invited to run some of the services. And the move comes as the force is being asked to make savings of £126 million over the next four years. It'll also mean a round of compulsory redundancies with 88 civilian posts going by next March. Our special correspondent, Peter Wilson, has this report. West Midlands Police is the second largest force in the country. This month, they've carried out a large-scale counter-terrorism operation, dealt with unprecedented riots and looting in August. Now, they're announcing the biggest shake-up of the force in its history. We're now moving into some, some more radical, if you like, transformation, because the, the proposal to consider working with the private sector um, really represents a, a step change in, in the way we're organised and an opportunity to radically transform the way we operate. Even the language used to describe this change is off the scale. It's radical, pioneering, even dangerous. The Chief Constable calls it the biggest show in town. But West Midlands Police is already undergoing vast change and some police officers are privately telling me that they doubt if they can cope with this level of upheaval. The police authority already needs to save £38 million from next year's budget. Talk of the private sector is years away, but the police federation today met the chief constable and called the proposals destructive and dangerous. What you will get is, is police officers still doing their best to protect the public, but in reality, with substantial cuts like are being made, you'll have less police officers and you'll have less of a service. So how do you, how do you find stains then? Any, any the force is cooperating with Surrey Police and the Home Office to find a private sector partner to help streamline and deliver future services. It could mean 999 call centres, custody suites, even forensics being carried out by an outside company. Well, at the moment, if somebody rings 999, they get uh, through to the police and speak to somebody who's employed by the police, uh, probably one of our members. Uh, under this new proposal, we could well have a situation where they're speaking to a, th a third party, a, a different organisation. The government is clear that the police, just like other public organisations, have to make budget cuts. I think it's important that the police look at all aspects to make sure that they can get value for money, not just for the taxpayer, but the, so people can actually see police on the front line doing the job that most police officers join the police force to do. Crossing a line. One question concerning the police authority is how to manage and control the partnership with a future private company. The police authority will not just be looking for protection of staff, protection of uh, services, but obviously looking for guarantees uh, that we will be able to continue to offer a police force that's completely objective, just uh, responsible to the law, uh, the rule of law around the community. Are people going to notice a difference on the streets? They will see that they've still got neighbourhood policing, they've still got people able to respond to their needs, that it will be a well-supported organisation, but it will be uh, leaner and more efficient. Tonight, the Home Office said it would support all police forces to help develop partnerships with private companies to ultimately free up police officers to get on with the real job of fighting crime. And Peter Wilson is uh, here with us. Now, Peter, there are really two issues here, aren't there? Because there are the cuts, and then this, there's this issue of how the private sector is going to be used for police jobs. How is this going to affect how the West Midlands is policed? Well, as far as the cuts are concerned, we're looking at something like approaching 400 jobs, which are going to go by... March of, of next year and as we've already said 88 of those are going to be compulsory redundancies and that's the first time that West Midlands Police have ever sort of forced through redundancies like this. Now the Police Federation are telling me that ordinary people may see uh, a difference quite soon because eight dog handlers uh, are going to be um, moved out of that section that they're, they're, they're going to lose the Alsatian dogs in that respect and some 65 traffic officers are also going to have their duties changed. Now 
Now, those numbers don't mean post loss. They're going to be redeployed in, in other areas. But the wider question about bringing in a, a private company is obviously going to change the whole face of Westminster's police. I mean, the police federation have been quite strong, haven't they? Because they've talked about this in terms of demolishing the police service. Is this, to an extent, what is beginning to happen? What, what the unions are, are, are saying is that there's a police family, that there's a, um, a feeling of, of duty and that often people are connected either through, through family or because they used to be full-time police officers as well and that this will change. But I think what the government is looking for and perhaps what the Chief Constable is looking for as well is a, a total change in culture which only a private company can bring. And very briefly, the time schedule for this, when do things change? Well, there's going to be six, six st stages and the police authorities say that they could stop it at any stage, but they should find a partner by December of next year. All right, Peter Wilson, thank you very much indeed. Big changes have been announced at the Trust that runs Stafford Hospital.